Um, I'm a psychiatric nurse, and so I'll take this from the clinical side first, but then I'll also give some options for anybody who's not a specialist or trained in mental health. The counselor should be doing a crisis assessment, right? A suicide assessment, seeing if they have a plan, what is that plan? Digging deeper, asking questions. Really the main thing you want to remember is that professional or that person who the uh, adolescent has come out to, um, they need to be open and honest and set the stage for a inclusive and a safe space, not in a judgmental tone or any sort of those things. Some of the tools that family members or counselors or anybody, honestly, even myself can use is QPR training, um, which is the question, persuade and respond training. That is a suicide uh, mental health first aid course or training that you can get. And basically what it ha um, helps you to do is just what I said, question, which is dig a little bit deeper, listen to the individual, or in this case, the teen who is coming to you at this really, really vulnerable time, persuade them to not make any brash decisions, um, tell them that this is a safe space, um, and there are options past how you are feeling right now and the feelings that you are feeling. And then respond, which means also outsourcing them to either clinicians or resources or services that could help them continue to go forth in this mental health journey. Also contacting parents. And if the individual is adamant about harming themselves in that moment, right, um, or is adamant about harming themselves once they leave your presence, you do want to um, let somebody know, like the parent and other professionals that can help you um, handle that particular situation. Calling 988, wherever you are in the U.S., right now you will get um, hooked up to a crisis line, and in turn, they can help you maneuver through the steps that you need to take with that individual, with that teen. Also in the state of Maryland, because we are Maryland based, you can also use 211. And for any individual, adolescents, teenagers that need to talk to somebody, you don't always have to resort to 988. Maryland has made a crisis text line just for you. And if you text 211 with whatever your concern is, you'll be able to get in touch with um, some support. So hopefully that answers a good amount of your questions about the immediate. Back up, back up. Oh, hopefully that answers a good amount of your questions about what you can do in a really urgent situation when you're talking about uh, a youth wanting to take their life. This Holistic Hand series on crisis intervention and suicide prevention was brought to you by the Eudaimonia Project. Recipients of the Changemaker Challenge Grant from the Community Foundation of Howard County Horizon Foundation, United Way of Central Maryland, the Women's Giving Circle, and viewers like you. The Eudaimonia Project is honored to be a 2024 Changemaker Challenge winner in Howard County. Imagine stepping into a therapy session, feeling unsure and overwhelmed. But what if you can walk in with confidence and a clear mind? At the Eudaimonia Project, we bridge the gap between uncertainty and empowerment, providing tools and guidance to help individuals make the most of their journey. Inspired by the challenges many face when seeking mental health support, we set out to create a space where preparation meets progress. We understand that the first step into therapy, it can be daunting. That's why we offer essential prep work through workshops, support groups, and educational resources. Our services are designed to empower you. From interactive workshops and support groups to comprehensive resources, we ensure that you're ready for every step of your therapeutic journey. Join us at the Eudaimonia Project. Together, we can transform uncertainty into confidence and make a lasting impact on your mental health journey. Let's bridge the gap to a brighter future. Taking off my clinician hat, um, but knowing some of the experience and the training that I have, I would ask them, where are they? Make sure that they are safe 
make sure that they don't have weapons or anything like that in their vicinity or in their hands. And I know they're going to be truthful with me. And I would tell them first to calm down and breathe. Right. Not saying calm down and breathe, but I want you to breathe with me. I want you to let out a scream. I need you to do whatever you need to do in this short amount of time before I can get to you, if I can get to you. Right. Or somebody that I love and that you trust can get to you before you make any decisions. And really having those like holistic approaches, that aspect of mindful breathing. Sometimes we'll do uh, exercises such as box breathing where you'll inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale. Those types of exercises will really, in the moment, help the individual calm down um, and really recenter themselves. And so that's what I would do for any loved one of mine uh, before I can get to them. This holistic hand series on crisis intervention and suicide prevention was brought to you by the Eudaimonia Project. Recipients of the Changemaker Challenge Grant from the Community Foundation of Howard County, Horizon Foundation, United Way of Central Maryland, the Women's Giving Circle, and viewers like you. The Eudaimonia Project is honored to be a 2024 Changemaker Challenge winner in Howard County. Imagine stepping into a therapy session, feeling unsure and overwhelmed. But what if you can walk in with confidence and a clear mind? At the Eudaimonia Project, we bridge the gap between uncertainty and empowerment, providing tools and guidance to help individuals make the most of their journey. Inspired by the challenges many face when seeking mental health support, we set out to create a space where preparation meets progress. We understand that the first step into therapy, it can be daunting. That's why we offer essential prep work through workshops, support groups, and educational resources. Our services are designed to empower you. From interactive workshops and support groups to comprehensive resources, we ensure that you're ready for every step of your therapeutic journey. Join us at the Eudaimonia Project. Together, we can transform uncertainty into confidence and make a lasting impact on your mental health journey. Let's bridge the gap to a brighter future. getting ready to do box breathing, what I want you to do is to close your eyes, right? Um, imagine either a really happy place or happy time, or you don't have to imagine anything at all. Just, just be in tune with your body and yourself, right? I want you to open your eyes and also look at me because we're going to do this exercise together. And I want you to see the box that we're creating as you Take in and exhale your breaths. Start from this side. When I go up, you're gonna breathe in. Hold it for three seconds and then let it out. Breathe in again. Hold it for three seconds, let it out. And then we've created our first box and that's box breathing. This holistic hand series on crisis intervention and suicide prevention was brought to you by the Eudaimonia Project. Recipients of the Changemaker Challenge Grant from the Community Foundation of Howard County, Horizon Foundation, United Way of Central Maryland, the Women's Giving Circle, and viewers like you. The Eudaimonia Project is honored to be a 2024 Changemaker Challenge winner in Howard County. Imagine stepping into a therapy session, feeling unsure and overwhelmed. But what if you can walk in with confidence and a clear mind? At the Eudaimonia Project, we bridge the gap between uncertainty and empowerment, providing tools and guidance to help individuals make the most of their journey. Inspired by the challenges many face when seeking mental health support, we set out to create a space where preparation meets progress. We understand that the first step into therapy, it can be daunting. That's why we offer essential prep work through workshops, support groups, and educational resources. 
Our services are designed to empower you. From interactive workshops and support groups to comprehensive resources, we ensure that you're ready for every step of your therapeutic journey. Join us at the Eudaimonia Project. Together, we can transform uncertainty into confidence and make a lasting impact on your mental health journey. Let's bridge the gap to a brighter future. So I'm never going to say that full-on replacements of Western medicine, uh, I can't competently advise that as a practitioner to be. But what I can say is research shows that without medication ex assistance, a lot of cognitive behavioral therapy will do that work without you having to take medications. And so especially for teenagers, there's research that shows that if they're... Um, linked up with a cognitive behavioral specialist, it can be a counselor, anybody that's licensed to do that therapy work, that they are at a 50% chance of not of successfully getting through that therapy um, and not making an, an attempt on their life. And so specifically in this case study, I would recommend resources first, um, one, to get to a clinician that can provide that cognitive behavioral therapy for them before you start exploring medication-assisted therapy. Um, there is nothing wrong, though, with being able to both join medication-assisted therapy at the lowest dosage that's needed for the acuity of uh, whatever the um, suicidality or depression is with cognitive behavioral therapy because that gives them an even better chance of coming out and, and maybe not even having to continue to take the medication and then have some upkeep with cognitive behavioral therapy as well. This Holistic Hand series on crisis intervention and suicide prevention was brought to you by the Eudaimonia Project. Recipients of the Changemaker Challenge Grant from the Community Foundation of Howard County, Horizon Foundation, United Way of Central Maryland, the Women's Giving Circle, and viewers like you. The Eudaimonia Project is honored to be a 2024 Changemaker Challenge winner in Howard County. Imagine. Stepping into a therapy session, feeling unsure and overwhelmed. But what if you can walk in with confidence and a clear mind? At the Eudaimonia Project, we bridge the gap between uncertainty and empowerment, providing tools and guidance to help individuals make the most of their journey. Inspired by the challenges many face when seeking mental health support, we set out to create a space where preparation meets progress. We understand that the first step into therapy, it can be daunting. That's why we offer essential prep work through workshops, support groups, and educational resources. Our services are designed to empower you. From interactive workshops and support groups to comprehensive resources, we ensure that you're ready for every step of your therapeutic journey. Join us at the Eudaimonia Project. Together, we can transform uncertainty into confidence and make a lasting impact on your mental health journey. Let's bridge the gap to a brighter future. Cognitive behavioral therapy is one of the main uh, therapeutic ways that we get people to change their minds and their reactions to negative situations. And so take for an example, you had a really horrible day at school, maybe you've been bullied or something just did not go your way. And you're thinking, hey, I don't belong in this world. I did something wrong. Something's wrong with me. I should just go and either make an attempt on my life or I should run away or do something that's ne that would be really harmful and negative to you or others around you. What we're gonna do in cognitive behavioral therapy is we're gonna dissect, hey, why do I feel this way about myself even when negative situations happen? Problems will arise, but how we react to them and how our brain reacts to them is key. And so what any, um, 
what any mental health provider is going to do, it's going to dissect, why do you think that way about yourself? Why do you think these things about yourself? And then in turn, why do you react in certain ways about the things that you think? We're going to change both the thought process and the reaction to it. So now you can say, hey, I had a really bad day, but that does not define me. Those kids may have bullied me at school, but I know that I can come home or I have a, a really good thought process and backing behind myself where I know that I'm worth it and I don't have to run away. I don't have to take my life. I, and I have the resources and, and tools such as your therapist, such as your family, your parents and your loved ones to go to and get help. This holistic hand series on crisis intervention and suicide prevention was brought to you by the Eudaimonia Project. Recipients of the Changemaker Challenge Grant from the Community Foundation of Howard County, Horizon Foundation, United Way of Central Maryland, the Women's Giving Circle, and viewers like you. The Eudaimonia Project is honored to be a 2024 Changemaker Challenge winner in Howard County. Imagine stepping into a therapy session, feeling unsure and overwhelmed. But what if you can walk in with confidence and a clear mind? At the Eudaimonia Project, we bridge the gap between uncertainty and empowerment, providing tools and guidance to help individuals make the most of their journey. Inspired by the challenges many face when seeking mental health support, we set out to create a space where preparation meets progress. We understand that the first step into therapy, it can be daunting. That's why we offer essential prep work through workshops, support groups, and educational resources. Our services are designed to empower you. From interactive workshops and support groups to comprehensive resources, we ensure that you're ready for every step of your therapeutic journey. Join us at the Eudaimonia Project. Together, we can transform uncertainty into confidence and make a lasting impact on your mental health journey. Let's bridge the gap to a brighter future. Our holistic take on suicide awareness and prevention. And thank you for staying with me. My name is Sterling Woolmer. This is Your Nurse signing off, and I'll see you next time. This holistic hand series on crisis intervention and suicide prevention was brought to you by the Eudaimonia Project. Recipients of the Changemaker Challenge Grant from the Community Foundation of Howard County, Horizon Foundation, United Way of Central Maryland, the Women's Giving Circle, and viewers like you. The Eudaimonia Project is honored to be a 2024 Changemaker Challenge winner in Howard County. So cognitive behavioral therapy literally changes the wiring in your brain, right, on how you react on how you think and how you perceive the rest of the world. So many sicknesses and illnesses are linked to anxiety and depression, cardiovascular disease, um, and then lots of different mental illness diagnoses as well. Body dysmorphia, the list goes on and on. When we start, especially at a young age, being able to reframe and react in an appropriate way, it's gonna save you time in the long run. You're not feeling these anxious feelings. You're not feeling the physiological weight. Um, your heart racing, right? You being sleepy or really tired and lethargic all the time. Um, and so later on down the line, you won't have to combat as much cardiovascular disease. You won't have the levels of anxiety do you do because you have um, ha because you have reframed the way that you think and in turn react to your negative stimuli around you. And so that's really the benefit of cognitive behavioral therapy. first advice that I can give to anybody in crisis is, I know it's really hard right now, but don't make brash decisions, okay? There are some resources that maybe people or might or might not know. I definitely would call 988. I definitely would call 988. I've been there. I've had a crisis situation where I've made two nooses and I was ready, right? And I ended up not continuing on with suicide because one, I... I just had this 
insurmountable amount of tiredness come over me. But in that moment, I called a loved one and they picked up and they didn't even know what was going on. But they just talked to me and we just had a conversation and it was normal. Maybe you're not there. Maybe that's not you. Maybe you really actually need somebody to talk you off the ledge. And that is totally fine. If you want to call a friend and that's who you feel more comfortable with or family member, good. But do not isolate yourself. Call someone. The new uh, crisis mental health nine is 988. And they're going to guide you through some of the same things that I'm getting ready to tell you now. I would say just close your eyes and breathe. Take a moment to breathe and be mindful. And when I say be mindful, listen to your breath. You can put your hand over your heart, listen to your heartbeat. And we have not quite learned any of the cognitive behavioral techniques, the self-affirmations yet, right? But I want you to just hold on in that moment, wait for somebody on the other side of that call to pick up and then take it from there, okay? Just stop. If you are a loved one or a family member who is dealing um, with somebody who has a crisis situation, I definitely personally, again, would tell them to think about it, right? Stop. Let me breathe with you. We went through some of the breathing techniques, the box breathing before, and then go into what I would call the QPR training, which is the question um, persuade and response. It's the suicide, basically CPR for suicide. Um, and so going into questioning, questioning that person, being open and honest, and just being there to listen. You can find the root of the problem or sometimes the issues within the first 30 seconds. Um, if the person is not opening up, just at least inquire if they feel safe. Do they have a plan? Um, can you tell me um, if if you do have a plan, can you promise me this, even though they might not promise you? Make that space open and inviting and as safe as you can. Persuade them to, hey, let's talk to somebody. I can talk to somebody with you or for you. And then go ahead and reach out to those individuals, whether it be going to the psychiatric ER, going to your primary or even your designated mental health provider, or calling 988 or in the case of Maryland, if you're a minor, 211. This holistic hand series on crisis intervention and suicide prevention was brought to you by the Eudaimonia Project. Recipients of the Changemaker Challenge Grant from the Community Foundation of Howard County, Horizon Foundation, United Way of Central Maryland, the Women's Giving Circle, and viewers like you. The Eudaimonia Project is honored to be a 2024 Changemaker Challenge winner in Howard County. Imagine stepping into a therapy session, feeling unsure and overwhelmed. But what if you can walk in with confidence and a clear mind? At the Eudaimonia Project, we bridge the gap between uncertainty and empowerment, providing tools and guidance to help individuals make the most of their journey. Inspired by the challenges many face when seeking mental health support, we set out to create a space where preparation meets progress. We understand that the first step into therapy, it can be daunting. That's why we offer essential prep work through workshops, support groups, and educational resources. Our services are designed to empower you. From interactive workshops and support groups to comprehensive resources, we ensure that you're ready for every step of your therapeutic journey. Join us at the Eudaimonia Project. Together, we can transform uncertainty into confidence and make a lasting impact on your mental health journey. Let's bridge the gap to a brighter future. Everybody is a little bit overwhelmed with mindfulness. Everyone says mindfulness, 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 right? And it actually can be a really, really helpful tool. It doesn't have to be anything deep. When I experience anything like negative thoughts, like, oh, I can't do this, I'm, I'm never gonna achieve this goal, or I get really, really anxious, I literally just stop, I close my eyes, I take a deep breath, and I say, I am capable. And the feelings that I am feeling right now, be it anxiety or fear, is because I have been conditioned to believe that I am not capable, but I am. No matter what happens, no matter the outcome, I know that I did my best and things will work out the way that they are supposed to. It has no bearing on my worth or what I could do in the future. There we go. 
And so I am I was very frustrated with my parents because they kept flipping it as how how could you do this to us? How could you do this to the people that you love? And in that state of mind where it, it really is survival, it really is tunnel vision. It is fight or flight. I don't want to be here. This place, this earth is not safe to me. I want to leave. There's nothing that they could have said. There's nothing that they could have done in that moment to convince me that I belonged here on this earth. And so then pivoting it to them about how much it would hurt them and talking about them and me, 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 it just felt selfish. Mm -hmm. And I felt unsupported. It's like, it's like more pressure yeah. on top of like, all right, you know what? Now I got, fuck it, I'm really about to go. Because the, the problems that I was facing will, does not change. Whether you love me or not, whether you want to be here for me or not, whether you're going to miss me or not, the problems that I was facing and the experiences that I went through, they cannot be erased. They do not change. And so, and also a lot of times when people are very frustrated with their loved ones going through depressive episodes or or even su suicidal episodes. Some, it's, it's a brain chemistry thing as well. People are not understanding the true physiological sickness of, of some of the mental illness or mental health issues that people are experiencing. I had hypothyroidism that was diagnosed at 2019, but I had it for much longer. I had a thyroid, of, they said, a, of a 64-year-old when I was 24 and 25. And a lot of the physiological symptoms of hypothyroidism is lack of sleep or oversleeping, right? Um, depression, right? Um, all of these different um, things that look and feel like depression and also suicidal ideation. Part of it really was the chemical imbalance in my body and my vitamins being off as well. In addition, I am a black woman. We are so prone to vitamin D deficiencies. Vitamin D deficiencies can also affect your mood, low mood, depressive symptoms, that sort of thing. That's why you have people in Alaska, right, um, who don't get a lot of sunlight. They also have like weather induced or seasonal induced depression. It's a very real thing. And so I want people to think about all of the different ways and the different things that could be affecting this individual um, and, and how they are feeling this low mood or the suicidal ideation. It literally may be a chemical imbalance or a physiological imbalance. Or again, it may be, be from some unworked through trauma. Either way, irregardless, you cannot center yourself in your loved one's um, crises. That's not helpful. It's not helpful at all, and it's going to cost lives. So I really encourage people to do QPR training. Um, and, and at least if you don't do the training, find ways to not center yourself in your loved one's crises, because it's going to be all the better, and they're going to be feel, feeling so much more open um, about the things that they're experiencing and coming to you to seek that help. All right, real quick. Um... That my parents really stopped me from continuing on past further. I think as a psych nurse, I reflected on the experiences of my patients in inpatient hospital. And while I no longer work in that setting, my mom threatened to commit me. And I knew the system. I knew how it worked. I could most definitely easily weasel my way out of it because I knew the right things to say. One, you know, that's the pro of being a psych nurse. But two, if they were able to see through the BS and they were going to commit me anyway, because she had evidence, she had the two nooses ready. And um, if they were going to commit me, I did not want that inpatient experience. And later on, after I got out of my depressive and suicidal episodes, after I went to treatment, all of those things. I thought about how being inpatient in a psychiatric facility deterred me from taking my own life. And why as a psych nurse is that so wrong? And so from that, then there, that day, I dedicated myself, I said, I want community centered mental health. And I don't like institutionalized mental health. I think that there is a time and a place and a reason for short acute stays in psychiatric hospitals. But I do believe that the Western world has, world has a lot further to push as far as restorative care and mental health justice. And if I am a psych nurse and I'm saying I do not want to be committed into an inpatient facility from the from surely the way that I've been treated and that right there deterred me from taking my own life. There's something wrong there.
there's something wrong with the system. Mm. And so that is why I'm continuing to dedicate my life through holistic hands, through the community partnerships that I have, through Helping Hands AI. So people do not have to necessarily go into an institutionalized mental health system if they don't want to. They can go and, and look at ketamine treatment and holistic therapies and white noise therapies and float therapies, art therapies, exercise therapies. There's so many other different options um, to medication and being institutionalized. Again, acute, really acute um, and highly acute, dangerous psychiatric episodes should go to a facility with the professionals where they can be treated. Um, but as for some other of these issues and, and mental health issues, I think that we can do a much better way other than institutionalizing people to address said mental health care. Wow. Sorry. I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to... Imagine stepping into a therapy session feeling unsure and overwhelmed. But what if you can walk in with confidence and a clear mind? At the Eudaimonia Project, we bridge the gap between uncertainty and empowerment, providing tools and guidance to help individuals make the most of their journey. Inspired by the challenges many face when seeking mental health support, we set out to create a space where preparation meets progress. We understand that the first step into therapy, it can be daunting. That's why we offer essential prep work through workshops, support groups, and educational resources. Our services are designed to empower you. From interactive workshops and support groups to comprehensive resources, we ensure that you're ready for every step of your therapeutic journey. Join us at the Eudaimonia Project. Together, we can transform uncertainty into confidence and make a lasting impact on your mental health journey. Let's bridge the gap to a brighter future. It's a time and a place for self-reflection, right? But the self-reflection and what we would call in, in psych protective factors, which is your daughter, your job, your family, the things that you enjoy, all of that stuff, right? There is a time and a place to bring those things up and be reflective and say, okay, let's start looking at, at all the things that you have to look forward to. What do you still enjoy? What are some goals? What are some dreams that you have, right? But in that really immediate time of crises or in that span of months or however long where they're not receptive, the person is not receptive to being able to be effectively reflective, self-reflective, all it really is doing is more harm than good. And so that is why going to a clinician, a therapist, even a holistic practitioner, right? Um, and getting guidance on when the appropriate time is to start intervening and doing the self-reflection, doing the cognitive behavioral therapy or cognitive behavioral restructuring, looking at the, the protective factors um, and start building your, your resiliency list or the making goals and, and doing all the, that sort of work, um, it's, it's really important to find a specialist to do that. Um, and that specialist knowing when the right time is to start bringing these things up. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say the way that, and I would say like medical care and the medical system and our medical upkeep, right? Preventative care is not popular, but the way that you would get a checkup for your teeth, an annual checkup or a visit for your primary care, you need to do, I would say times 10 for your mental health. You should have, if it's not a counselor, but you should have some type of therapist or some type of group or a therapy that you are going to at least monthly, whether it be art therapy, whether it be music therapy, whether it be talk therapy, right? Um, especially for parents, I, I, because this is a because this is a special about parents and kids and minors. You should be going to group therapy most definitely. I think being able to have somebody facilitate um, these conversations that you might not be able to talk about around the table and having a therapeutic, um, non, non, uh, a bipartisan mind in the middle of some of the situations going on in your household would be really, really helpful and, and 
you now modeling the process in front of your kids saying, hey, mom and dad care about their mental health. Mom and dad care about the dynamic that we have with each other. Mom and dad care about, or whatever parent care about the dynamic that I have with you. And we have brought this specialist in that's gonna help guide us through life, um, loss, all of these different things and appropriately deal with our mental health as a family and as an individual. I think it's really, really important for parents to do that. And being um, somebody that has come from the black community, I know there are a lot of communities like uh, mine out there that it has been very taboo for people to model that. Um, one, because that system has not created space for them, an opportunity to reach out and say, hey, my mental health is suffering. But now we are on a new day and a new dawn and a new age and a new time. And so I want to encourage everybody that no matter your, mm, let's say, medium, right, you might be very much artistically inclined and you might not um, want to do talk therapy. That's totally fine. Take your child with you to art therapy. They have art therapy just for children or children and parents. It doesn't matter. Whatever your type of therapy or mental health um, intervention is, you need to model that in front of your child and you need to do that for yourself. Because I know people say it a lot, it's cliche, but you're not as good for other people um, if you can't invest in yourself and invest in your mental health first. Okay, okay. Imagine stepping into a therapy session feeling unsure and overwhelmed. But what if you can walk in with confidence and a clear mind? At the Eudaimonia Project, we bridge the gap between uncertainty and empowerment, providing tools and guidance to help individuals make the most of their journey. Inspired by the challenges many face when seeking mental health support, we set out to create a space where preparation meets progress. We understand that the first step into therapy, it can be daunting. That's why we offer essential prep work through workshops, support groups, and educational resources. Our services are designed to empower you. From interactive workshops and support groups to comprehensive resources, we ensure that you're ready for every step of your therapeutic journey. Join us at the Eudaimonia Project. Together, we can transform uncertainty into confidence and make a lasting impact on your mental health journey. Let's bridge the gap to a brighter future. I want a lot of people to understand uh, that those that are in situations such as suicidal ideation or thinking about taking their life. I want you to take what I'm saying with the utmost amount of love and respect, but to the loved ones or the ones that are concerned about the person, you have to take yourself away from it. You cannot center yourself in your loved ones or your family member's pain. Phrases like, but I love you. I think you're great. Why would you do this to me? This is very selfish. Centering yourself at your loved one's pain is doing it in, in detriment to your loved one's expense. And so while I know you mean well by expressing how much you love and you care for them, it comes across quite, quite self-centered and a selfish act sometimes, not all the times, but sometimes when there is a person in immediate crisis and you pivot to the reason why you want them to live or you want them to not harm yourself solely being about you. You have to come up with ways just to sit and listen as to what the problem is and not think reactively as to how can I convince them to stay here with me? Because at the end of the day, it's not solely about you right? It's about the things that they are going through. It's usually a, a whole culmination of things that are happening in their life. And you might be one of the problems, but irregardless, it's not just about you and your experience with this person who is going through something that is valid and very scary to you, but you have to take yourself out of it and you have to center that person as well. This Holistic Hand series on crisis intervention and suicide prevention was brought to you by the Eudaimonia Project. Recipients of the Changemaker Challenge Grant from the Community Foundation of Howard County, Horizon Foundation, 
United Way of Central Maryland, the Women's Giving Circle, and viewers like you. The Eudaimonia Project is honored to be a 2024 Changemaker Challenge winner in Howard County. Imagine stepping into a therapy session, feeling unsure and overwhelmed. But what if you can walk in with confidence and a clear mind? At the Eudaimonia Project, we bridge the gap between uncertainty and empowerment, providing tools and guidance to help individuals make the most of their journey. Inspired by the challenges many face when seeking mental health support, we set out to create a space where preparation meets progress. We understand that the first step into therapy, it can be daunting. That's why we offer essential prep work through workshops, support groups, and educational resources. Our services are designed to empower you. From interactive workshops and support groups to comprehensive resources, we ensure that you're ready for every step of your therapeutic journey. Join us at the Eudaimonia Project. Together, we can transform uncertainty into confidence and make a lasting impact on your mental health journey. Let's bridge the gap to a brighter future. Our creatures happen. Um, and we can get into all the different theories, talking about the, the social cognitive learning theory, right? Th those sorts of theories. But in the simplest terms, the human beings that you are raising, and even people just in regular life, they are looking to survive and they are watching other human beings that have what they want, what they have, be it school or funds or whatever that they think that they need, they are watching other people. And that's being said, whatever you model in front of your child is what they are going to pick up, good and the bad and the gray area. And so modeling that you are prioritizing your mental health, that mental health is important, just like people prioritize religion and getting up and going to work and going to school, we can prioritize taking care of our mental health and our physical health as well. And so that is why it's really important for your child or others around you to see that um, you are doing what you say that you believe in and that you are doing. Because in the long run, they are going to pick up on it and it's gonna be ingrained in them just by them observing. This Holistic Hand series on crisis intervention and suicide prevention was brought to you by the Eudaimonia Project. Recipients of the Changemaker Challenge Grant from the Community Foundation of Howard County, Horizon Foundation, United Way of Central Maryland, the Women's Giving Circle, and viewers like you. The Eudaimonia Project is honored to be a 2024 Changemaker Challenge winner in Howard County.